Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudobuyo playing Vanilla Minecraft 1.9 PC Edition. Uh, yay, it's finally out. Um, I'm, I'm glad it's out, warts and all. Uh, this video is a tutorial for Unary Bits Carrot and Potato Farm uh, with a fix for the new 1.9 mechanics. Uh, now, to be absolutely clear, the overall design of this build is by Unary Bit. I'm doing this tutorial partly because I was asked by some viewers and partly because I came up with the included fix. If you have an existing build and you're only interested in the easiest way to convert it from 1.8 to 1.9, I'll cover that in a separate but shorter video, uh, and I'll get that recorded as soon as I can manage. Uh, otherwise, if you're already familiar with the build and aren't so interested in the tutorial or my descriptions of the mechanics, uh, you may instead want to uh, just download this tutorial world and play around with it, uh, and the link for that can be found in the description. Uh, okay, these are the materials that are required for the build. Um, for the rooftop, uh, we're going to need about t uh, 12 stacks of stone slabs uh, and about 25 stacks of full blocks. Uh, there's also some glass panes here for decoration, uh, though the rooftop is mostly functional, as I'll explain later. Uh, as for the foundation, um, there's um, uh, about 12 stacks of slabs here and about the same of full blocks. Uh, and whereas the rooftop is functional, the foundation is really just meant to balance the look of the build. Uh, okay, so um, this particular build has four farm layers uh, uh, indicated by the uh, ribbons of limestone glass. So there's one, two, three, and four. Uh, and each farm layer includes about uh, 10 stacks of slabs, uh, about 14 stacks of full blocks, uh, and then we've got some glass and some glass panes here. Uh, now these blocks are mostly for the structure of the farm layer. Uh, the slabs are required, uh, but they can be any kind of slabs, uh, and there's a lot of choice for the other material depending upon how you want the farm to look. Uh, in my 1.8 world, this build uses a lot of spruce wood and birch wood, um, uh, but those blocks are seamless. Uh, uh, so the, for the uh, tutorial, I'm using iron blocks and stone slabs uh, just, uh, just to make it easier to count spacing. Uh, in case you're curious, though, uh, this, is, um, this is more or less how the build would look in my 1.8 world uh, after the 1.9 adjustments. Okay. Uh, now, for each farm layer, uh, you will also need about 10 stacks of dirt. Um, each layer requires uh, actually a few blocks more than this, but uh, about 10 stacks. Uh, and, um, any kind of block lighting can be used in place of the 16 sea lanterns, um, jack lanterns, for example. Um, it's also possible to use 24 torches instead, uh, and I'll show an example configuration for that. Uh, any or all of the nine lily pads can be replaced by carpets or even trap doors, uh, though I think lily pads look nicer, and in one case they seem to work uh, just a little bit better. Uh, let's see, two fence gates. Uh, I'm using fence gates uh, because I think they look nicer here, but you can also use signs. Um, now I've added a trap door since I first released this tutorial world, and I'll talk about why a bit later. Um, and uh, lastly, you'll need a stone pressure plate. And there's really no substitution for this one. Uh, using string or any other kind of pressure plate will reduce the output, uh, as I'll explain in just a minute. Uh, now, notice that the materials here include no doors. Uh, this build does rely on the villager AI, and we don't want villagers freaking out because, uh, you know, they're trying to get into a house or they're trying to path back to some village that, uh, that they can't reach. Uh, so be sure to build this. Uh, be sure to build this a good distance from the nearest village, uh, and if you do make any modifications, either don't use wooden doors uh, or ensure that the doors can't be recognized as valid doors of a village. Uh, okay, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the completed build in action. Each farm layer has two villagers. Um, a hungry villager is stuck in the middle. Uh, and a farming villager tends the uh, farmland and attempts to share harvested food with a hungry villager. Um, we can see all of the uh, hungry villagers there sort of uh, trapped in the center. There's one for each farm layer, and of course we have one farming villager for each layer. Uh, in case you're wondering, I have given the, uh, <laughs> I've given the uh, villagers here the new 1.9 glowing effect, um, just in order to make them a bit easier to identify. Uh, all right, let's head in here. All right, so the, uh, the farming villager over there uh, continuously harvests and plants crops. Um, all of the farmland up here is planted, except for one block in the exact center uh, right here. Uh, and um, uh, so when the farming villager is looking for unplanted farmland, he will always find that spot in the center. Uh, 
uh, he'll plant a crop on the bare farmland, uh, and while he's here, he might take notice of the uh, of the hungry villager up there, uh, and he might decide to share some of the newly harvested food. <laughs> but uh, let's see if he's going to go ahead and share some food here. Uh, no, he's not in a sharing mood right now. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, uh, but when he does decide to share food, um, he's going to toss the uh, toss the food. But he's got a little bit of a bum arm, so it's not actually going to make it to the hungry villager there. Instead, the food is going to enter this uh, short little water stream, and it's going to get flushed to a drop chute, where it gets collected by yours truly. Uh, and uh, when the uh, farming villager uh, is done in the center here, and he decides to uh, harvest some more crops, he'll leave the center, uh, crossing over the stone pressure plate. Uh, now, a pressure plate causes a block update to each adjacent block when the pressure plate is either activated or deactivated. Uh, so when the uh, uh, when the farming villager crosses the pressure plate, uh, let's see if we can see that in action here. He's going to move. Uh, eventually he'll move. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but um, uh, when the farming villager crosses the pressure plate, uh, the newly planted crop in the center will receive a block update. Uh, and that causes the crop to check the conditions for its placement. Uh, and one of those conditions is that um, uh, is that the light level in the block above the crop must be nine or greater. Uh, but the lighting in here is uh, is such that the um, uh, that this is actually the only spot where the light level above the crop uh, is less than nine. Uh, so the crop in the center is going to pop out when the farming villager crosses the pressure plate, uh, ensuring the farmland in the center uh, remains unplanted, which in turn ensures that the farming villager will continue to return to the center where he will attempt to share more harvested crops. Uh, and uh, that cycle is just going to continue. Uh, so uh, uh, now while I was tracking down some reported problems in a version that relied on string instead of a stone pressure plate, uh, I noticed that the farming villager could occasionally leave the, the center block planted. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, um, that meant that the farming villager wouldn't return to the center until the crop popped out after receiving a random block tick, uh, which really could be several minutes later. Um, ultimately, I was able to determine that this was a matter of timing with respect to the activation of the string, uh, because the farming villager was not the only entity causing the activation. Uh, string, wooden pressure plates, and both kinds of weighted pressure plates can be activated by item entities, um, such as excess seeds lying on the ground, or uh, a carrot that had popped out and is just sitting there. Uh, uh, on the other hand, a stone pressure plate is not activated by item entities, and that is why I'm using a stone pressure plate. Uh, only, the, only the farming villager can activate it, uh, which means no timing conflicts. Uh, okay, a few other things to note here uh, before I begin the build. Uh, first, when the center crop pops out, it can sometimes pop out high enough to enter the water stream here. Uh, and that is fine for potatoes and carrots, uh, but for wheat and beetroots, that means you'll see a few seeds in the output. Uh, and it is difficult to eliminate that deviation from the functionality of Unary Bit's original design. So uh, if you're simply upgrading a 1.8 farm, you may need to adjust your item filter if you have one connected. Uh, second, um, this farm can be used for bread and beetroots, as I just alluded. Um, this layer here is carrots, um, but I've got beetroots above and wheat down below that gets grafted into bread. Uh, uh, that, and um, I can do that because of how the villagers' inventories are managed. Uh, a villager will only lose uh, items from its inventory under three circumstances. Uh, when planting a crop, uh, when sharing food, or when becoming willing to breed. Uh, neither wheat nor beetroots can be planted. A, uh, a villager never shares more than half his stack of food. Uh, and our villagers aren't even near a village, so they never become willing to breed. Uh, so when one slot of a non-breeding villager's inventory is devoted to wheat or beetroots, uh, that villager will forever have at least one slot devoted to wheat or beetroots. Uh, that means it's impossible for the inventory of the farming villager to um, uh, to fill up with seeds, uh, which really makes this a beetroot slash carrot slash potato slash bread farm, uh, as is evidenced by the output, which we can go take a look here. All right, yeah, there, there's a big pile of stuff that's coming from all four layers here. It's a bit hard to see, but there is bread and potatoes and, and carrots and beetroots there. There are some more beetroots coming down. Uh, okay, so... Um, now, uh, incidentally, this farm has actually been running for a really long time over various 1.9 snapshots and pre-releases. 
um, in the long, long ago, in the 1.8 snap snapshots, our, our wheat farming villager would already have a corrupted inventory and he would have stopped farming. Uh, but uh, many of the issues regarding villager inventories have been addressed. So um, uh, farming bread and beetroots appears to be stable, uh, but please do let me know if you have any additional insights. Uh, okay, the, uh, the third thing to note before beginning the build is the behavior of the farming villagers while I'm still in spectator mode. Um, un unlike other mobs that freeze when no player is around, uh, villagers continue to farm and to share food. Uh, now, this farm here is in the spawn chunks, uh, so the farming villagers will stay loaded and they will continue to farm even when I'm too far away for the plants to grow or, or when I'm in spectator mode, for example. Uh, plants aren't going to grow when I'm in spectator mode um, and most mobs would freeze, but the farming villagers are going to continue to farm and share food. Uh, now, if I'm away for long enough or if I'm in spectator mode long enough, uh, the farming villagers will actually harvest all of the mature crops. Uh, and they will share all of the food they're willing to share, uh, which means that uh, when I return or when I uh, uh, re-enter creative mode, um, they'll all actually be glued to the center here. Uh, and that's nothing to worry about, though. Uh, it is to be expected if you have a situation where the farming villagers are loaded more often than the crops are within update range. Uh, and... Uh, and that leads me to my last note um, <laughs> be, uh, before the build, uh, the sad news that this farm has been nerfed a bit. Um, I don't think it's been very well reported yet, but the update range for plants has been reduced. Uh, more specifically, uh, I think the new rule is that block ticks to plants are now processed only if the chunk is within a certain circular radius of the player. Uh, and effectively, that means the plants in the corner chunks of the chunks loaded around the player will not grow as they did before, uh, and that's because they don't fall within the circular radius. Uh, just something to keep in mind uh, when considering where to place the farm. Okay, uh, now on with the build. I'm going to start with a 31 by 31 square of dirt, uh, and that's because a farming villager can detect farmland in a 31 by 31 square centered on himself. Uh, we can invert that condition and say that farmland can be detected by a farming villager in a 31 by 31 square centered on the farmland. So I've got my one block of farmland in the very center there. Uh, when a farmer detects farmland with air above uh, or with a mature crop above, he may path to the farmland in order to tend it. Uh, he may path to the farmland. Um, so over here, uh, I have the, uh, the viable restriction of the 31 by 31 area. Uh, the glass area is removed as non-viable. Uh, although a farming villager can detect the farmland uh, when standing in the glass area, uh, he won't actually uh, tend it if the, um, uh, if the uh, block of farmland is more than 16 blocks away as the crow flies. So if I'm standing over here on the corner, or if the farmer is standing over here on the corner, um, uh, this is more than 16 blocks away diagonally from the farmland, so um, <laughs> the farmer actually wouldn't tend the farmland. Uh, in my testing instead, he, he would just stand there, creepily staring at the, at the farmland. <laughs> uh, now, uh, within the 16 block radius, um, there are also some additional blocks that have been removed. Um, this one right here, for example, is less than 16 blocks away from the farm farmland, but it's been removed. Uh, 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 in these positions, the farming villager may choose not to search for farmland at all. Uh, instead, he'll switch out of his farming mode and do nothing. Um, maybe stare out the window, dream of joining a union, uh, I don't know. Uh, the point is that he will stop farming uh, until the player comes close enough for him to re-enter his farming mode. Uh, just a quick note here, um, this restriction is something that I lifted directly from Unary Bits 1.8 Tutorial World. Uh, I have verified the findings, um, though I haven't been very rigorous in my experimentation here. So, um, still, the, the results work pretty well in practice. Uh, over here is a... Um, uh, a um, an overlay of nine, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, nine by nine hydrated fields, um, uh, each field hydrated by a, a source block of water in the center. Uh, notice that um, this overlay covers the viable area uh, except for a strip of 13 blocks on each side. Uh, now, rather than use a different, less efficient arrangement of water sources to hydrate um, the blocks on the side here, 
those blocks uh, are simply going to get trimmed. Um, that will reduce the viable area by about 7%, uh, but that's not going to reduce the output of the farm, and that's because the intersecting area um, uh, with, uh, with all of the sides trimmed uh, will still produce mature crops faster than a single farming villager can, can harvest them. Uh, okay, so uh, over here uh, we have the intersection of the viable area with the overlay. Um, uh, this is a 27 by 27 square of dirt uh, with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 blocks cut from each corner. Uh, and we've got holes for the water sources to hydrate the farmland. Uh, this is slightly larger than Unary Bit's original design uh, because it adds uh, six blocks diagonally to each corner. Uh, uh, and that's due to a different lighting arrangement. Uh, but like the side blocks trimmed from the viable area over there, uh, the additional blocks in the corners uh, really aren't, are not are going to have a negligible impact to the output of the farm. Uh, I, I include them just because I like the farm to have a slightly wider look. Uh, now the only problem with the intersecting area um, is the um, is that the center block right here uh, that is slated to be a, a water source and that needs to be our low light block of farmland. Uh, so I'm going to split this and have a water source here and a water source here so that we can have the center block be farmland. Uh, all right. Uh, now around the dirt um, is going to be a, uh, a an edging of full blocks, uh, so that goes all the way around. Uh, and um, uh, and underneath, I've got a layer of full blocks uh, with some glass panes just for decoration. Uh, now I recommend that this base here underneath the dirt be separated from the ground by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, layers of air. Um, otherwise, if the farming villager is standing uh, at the uh, periphery here, um, if he's uh, just uh, right at the edge, um, he's at risk from lightning that strikes in the red area on the ground below. Uh, and if the villager takes damage from lightning, uh, he'll turn into a witch and despawn, uh, which of course would be bad. Uh, now, in the absence of uh, seven, uh, seven layers of separation, uh, you will need to take other precautions to prevent lightning from striking in the red area, um, such as, for example, an overhanging rooftop. Uh, and now for the lighting. This is my easy-peasy configuration for block lighting for this farm. Uh, each light is separated from the ground by one, two blocks. Uh, and the four blocks in the middle are spaced five blocks apart. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Um, that makes them the corners of a seven by seven square centered on the farm. Uh, you can double check their placement um, uh, by uh, uh, standing in the exact center, uh, so right here between the split water source, uh, and uh, pull up the debug information. Uh, the, um, uh, if you're standing right here, the uh, information for the light level should say seven block. Uh, so a uh, pro tip, it's probably a good idea uh, to, um, uh, to mark the center with a torch, uh, just temporarily at least, in order to prevent hostile mobs spawning while you continue building. Oh, okay, in addition to the lights in the middle, uh, there are three lights in a line on each side, uh, and um, these lights are centered on the side, uh, separated from the edge by two blocks. Uh, so there's two blocks in between the edge and the light, uh, and these are also spaced five blocks apart. Uh, now, if you don't want to use block lights, uh, you can instead use torches uh, or even end rods. There's a sample configuration over there. Um, <clears throat> uh, now, if you do use torches, at least the 12 torches in the middle uh, anything, uh, not including anything around the edge, but the 12 torches in the middle, um, those uh, should be placed on the ground, which means you'll sacrifice a, a bit of farmland. Uh, if you are interested in uh, these alternative lighting configurations, uh, please check the world download for the details on the spacing. Okay, uh, with the uh, lighting in place, uh, go ahead and put a too high wall. Uh, all the way around. Uh, I'm using lime stained glass here, just piled on the ed uh, onto the edging around the uh, around the dirt. Uh, now, uh, Unary Bits original design uses a one high wall, uh, and that's sufficient because other blocks prevent the farming villagers from jumping up on the wall and escaping. Uh, this is another choice that comes down to aesthetics, uh, and of course there are a lot of different options. 
Uh, now with the wall in place, uh, it's time to build the core. Uh, on one side of the split water source, um, uh, dig out a 3 by 4 section of dirt uh, and, uh, and replace it with this pattern of blocks, kind of a, a stubby letter A. Um, you could also just use the, the dirt, I suppose, uh, rather than digging it out, uh, but I prefer to use other blocks for the look. Now the hole at the top of the A is the drop chute. Uh, so um, uh, go ahead and poke out the block of the base below. We want to keep the drop chute open. Uh, and the other hole is here only because this farm layer is the bottom layer. Uh, when building layers above this one, uh, this block uh, actually um, uh, <laughs> wouldn't even be here um, because it would be the head of the hunger villager from the layer below. Uh, but since this is the bottom layer, uh, I'm going to leave the block there. Um, uh, and uh, above the head of the villager would be a, uh, a top half slab, uh, so I'm going to place a top half slab right here uh, just for consistency. Uh, okay, um, uh, now go ahead and um, uh, cover everything with a base of full blocks. Including the split water source uh, and the uh, block uh, above the center here, in between the split water source. Uh, now uh, add a fence gate over the center and another over the drop chute. Uh, and these fence gates do have to be open. Uh, I'm going to open them toward each other uh, just for the look. Uh, now add two layers of blocks around the edge. So there's one layer and two layers. Okay, uh, and now um, in between the fence gates, um, we need a short water stream. Let me get my water here. Um, this water stream needs to flow from the, sen uh, from the fence gate over the center towards the drop chute. So it's just, uh, too, long, uh, it's just too wide, so very short. Uh, and uh, add a block over the, uh, over the fence gate over the center, uh, and another block over the tail of the water stream. Uh, a lily pad is going to go on top of the water source here. Let's go ahead and place that just like that. Um, uh, now, you could also use a carpet or trap door here, but doing so seems to make the farming villager just a little less willing to share food. So a, a lily pad is probably best. Um, uh, I, um, I have used carpet in a lot of my testing of this, and carpet seems to work pretty well. Um, uh, you, you probably see a, a difference with a trap door here, though. Um, my testing was actually a bit uncertain with respect to the lily pad and the carpet difference, um, uh, but the lily pad seemed to edge out uh, edge out carpet just a bit. Uh, still, car carpet does work uh, still really well. So, uh, uh, okay, um, let's see. Um, anything else here? Uh, we've got the lily pad in place. Um, okay, so. Um, I think it's time to bring a villager in here, uh, and there are actually a lot of different ways uh, to get a villager in here, but I find it easiest to, to actually uh, just push one in place. Um, but before I do so, um, I'm going to add a, a top half slab uh, above the hole here, and that needs to be um, uh, one, two blocks up, right there. Uh, and um, uh, the, um, when the villager is standing on the lily pad, he'll have uh, just a bit less than two and a half blocks of space. That's enough for him to fit, but not enough for him to be able to jump out of the hole as long as all the blocks around the edge are there. Uh, now, if you get the villager into position first and then try to add this, um, uh, this top half slab in place, uh, you will need to push this in place uh, with a piston. Uh, okay, so I'm also going to add a trap door. Uh, underneath the uh, the slab here, uh, such that the trap door opens towards the center, just like that. Uh, and um, in my uh, survival world testing of this farm, I once discovered that the hungry villager had picked up food from the farming villager of the same layer here. Uh, and I think that's because the hungry villager in that in that case was pressed up right against the edge of the blocks here. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, the trap door just is there to simply enforce some separation uh, in order to keep the, uh, the hungry villager just a little bit farther away uh, so that he doesn't accidentally pick up some food. Uh, okay, so uh, we need to, uh, I'm going to get a, a villager in here, um, temporarily remove a couple of blocks, 
and uh, I'm going to add a little slab staircase um, just to make it easier to push this guy up, uh, just like that. Let's get our villager here. All right. Uh, now, this villager should have an empty inventory. Um, more precisely, he should have no food in his inventory. Uh, now, you can ensure that he can never have food in his inventory uh, by, um, uh, by uh, just throwing him eight stacks of seeds. If he's got eight stacks of seeds in his inventory, um, he can't pick up anything else, including food. Uh, but it really is sufficient um, just to have him have an empty inventory. Uh, uh, that, that should be okay. All right, let's get rid of our staircase here. Now we've got our villager in place. Um, the last thing here is uh, on the... Uh, <laughs> so I forgot actually to remove the blocks underneath uh, my fence gates. Um, there's, uh, I have two fence gates uh, on either side of the water stream. And they do need to be floating, so I need to poke out the block underneath them. Uh, there's the one over the drop chute to keep the drop chute open. And this one under uh, this one over the center of the farm needs to go as well. And uh, let's just put my torch back here. Uh, okay, so um, now the uh, now the last thing to do um, is to um, uh, on the other side of the center um, to dig out that block of dirt here and add a block with a little pake top surface. Uh, again, you could really just use the dirt here, but I, I like using uh, different blocks for these uh, special ones. Uh, all the dirt is reserved for farmland. Uh, this block does need to have an opaque top surface, uh, and that's because the pressure plate goes on top. Uh, now, this is the only block that's required to be opaque. Uh, in Unary Bit's original design, uh, these blocks around the center uh, need to be opaque. Uh, but that's not necessary with this particular lighting arrangement. Uh, so uh, any or all of the blocks of the core, um, except this one here under the pressure plate, um, uh, they can be either opaque or transparent. Here I'm just using all, uh, all glass, um, uh, but uh, you could use cobblestone or whatever for, for any or all of these blocks. Uh, and that is it then for the core. Next, add a ceiling by raising the wall by a block. Um, that's these blocks of uh, iron around the edge here. Uh, and fill in the area around the lights with top half slabs. Uh, inside, let's head inside here. Uh, go ahead and cover up the water sources with uh, lily pads or carpets or, or even floating trap doors. Uh, don't use slabs though. So if you uh, used a slab to cover the water source here, uh, the farming villager could stop on top uh, trying to harvest or plant a crop, but, but he can't actually reach from there. So, so he'd be stuck in the slab trying to do something that's actually impossible for him. Um, also, don't use full blocks. Um, so uh, I, I've actually seen the farming villager try to path over or perhaps through, <laughs> through full blocks. Uh, even if the block is part of a pillar that extends all the way up to the ceiling, um, uh, the villager pathing AI still just seems to be a bit wonky. Uh, now, I've combined the addition of the ceiling with the um, uh, with the covering of the water sources uh, because they're they're kind of related. Uh, the first question you ask is why have a ceiling at all? Uh, if the farm layer above this one uh, has a solid base of full blocks, um, so uh, we've got uh, just all full blocks above there. Uh, you know, why not just use that as the ceiling? Uh, and the answer to that one is uh, Enderman. <laughs> um, without the slab ceiling, um, there's actually a three high space uh, uh, from the uh, from the farmland up to the uh, up to the ceiling, uh, and that would allow Enderman teleportation. And when Enderman teleport onto farmland, uh, the farmland reverts to dirt. Um, so without the uh, the shorter uh, space, uh, the expanse of farmland would eventually become pocked by blocks of unusable dirt, uh, like it's being spoiled by a giant gopher. Uh, now the second question to ask is, uh, why not have a ceiling of full blocks? Um, so we can just uh, have our ceiling be, uh, be something like this. Uh, and the answer to that one is, villagers. Uh, villagers are now actually so tall that the combined height of a villager uh, standing uh, on even a lily pad is greater than two blocks. Um, so if I had a, a full block ceiling up here, uh, let's just put a couple more in. If I had a full block ceiling, uh, <laughs> what, would, uh, what would end up happening is the farming villager would try to path over a lily pad, but because he can't fit through this vertical space, he would get stuck on the edge of the lily pad and he would just stand there. 
Uh, and for that reason, I've also taken care to place each block light so that the block light is not uh, directly over uh, a lily pad or over a water source uh, or adjacent uh, to a, or uh, over a block that's adjacent to a water source. Um, and that in that way, the villager always has enough uh, enough space to path over the lily pad. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. Um, let's get out of here uh, with the uh, uh, with the farm layer completely enclosed. It's time to go ahead and start it up. So the first thing to do would be to till all of the dirt in here. Um, you can go ahead and remove uh, any temporary lighting um, in the center here. Uh, since hostile mobs can't spawn on farmland. Uh, and, and the next step depends upon what crop you want. Uh, for carrots and potatoes, you can go ahead and bring in the farming villager. Um, this just has to be a brown robed villager, not necessarily a farmer. Uh, you know, can be a shepherd or a fisherman or whatever. Um, uh, like the hungry villager, the farming villager should start with an empty inventory. Uh, just talk, uh, toss him uh, one or more stacks of whatever you want planted, carrots or potatoes, and you can just walk away. He'll eventually plant the entire area all by himself. Um, you could do that. You could plant it beforehand before you bring the farmer in here. Um, but hey, he's willing to do the work. Uh, now for weed and beetroots, um, uh, seed all of the farmland first. So plant every square in here uh, and then bring in the farming villager. Uh, in, in that case, you don't have to toss him anything. He'll do the rest. Uh, but if you don't seed the whole area, he'll stop planting when he runs out of seeds, uh, and he won't harvest if he has enough wheat or beetroots. Uh, at that point, you'd have to wait until he passes into the center um, just by pure chance and toss some, hungry, uh, some food at the hungry villager, uh, which really could take a long time. Uh, and uh, that is a completed farm layer. Uh, so that's it. Um, <laughs> the, uh, 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 um, it's not actually fully functional until the rooftop is in place, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, and that's because the center block is receiving too much skylight for the crop to pop out. Uh, but the farm layer is complete. Um, uh, now a couple of quick notes here. First, don't mix crops in the same farm layer. Uh, make sure it's all carrots or all potatoes or all whatever. Uh, villagers only share from their first inventory slot with enough food, so, so the output would favor one crop anyway. Uh, second, um, you can use more than one farming villager per farm layer, so you could actually have two brown robe villagers floating around in here, uh, but you probably should not. Um, in the testing I did with this, uh, output increased by as much as a third. Uh, however, uh, when I was repeatedly reloading the chunks as part of, uh, of, part of my testing, uh, I once saw that one farming villager had pushed another into the glass blocks in the middle there of the core. <laughs> uh, um, and, and I think that the glass encased farmer, uh, the glass encased farming villager was actually able to successfully share food with the hungry villager. Uh, because he would have thrown food and it would have been levitated up through the glass. Um, uh, so uh, stick with the single farming villager for stability. Now that we have a completed farm layer, uh, additional identical farm layers can be stacked uh, just right on top of it. Um, here I have four layers, one for each crop type, uh, but you could have just one layer or ten layers or how many area you want. Uh, and, and after adding the desired number of farm layers, uh, put on the rooftop. Uh, the rooftop primarily consists of two layers of full blocks uh, with a layer of bottom half slabs uh, or, uh, over the top. Uh, and these three layers are highly recommended um, because they protect the farming villager in the top layer from lightning. If lightning strikes the roof, uh, so uh, right here, um, the, uh, the, it causes damage to entities uh, one, two, three blocks down. Uh, and it may actually look like there's an extra block of space in here, uh, but remember that uh, when a villager is, um, uh, is standing on a lily pad, um, he's more than two blocks high. Uh, so the, villager's head, the, vill the head of the farming villager can actually just barely peek into this block here. Uh, so one block lower and a badly timed lightning strike uh, could still turn a hapless farming villager into a witch. Uh, all right. In the uh, middle of the rooftop, uh, in the middle of the rooftop is a seven by seven square canopy of bottom half slabs, um, uh, raised by an additional two blocks. Um, uh, that little pillar of solid blocks is directly over the uh, uh, the top half slab that's over the head of our hungry villager on the top farm layer. There. Uh, now. Uh, 
if you downloaded my early release of this tutorial world, you might notice that I've shaved off a layer here. This used to be um, uh, up three blocks instead of two. Uh, and that's because I had previously raised the canopy by one block higher than was strictly necessary. Uh, now the canopy is going to be protecting the hungry villager in the top layer from lightning. Uh, it is slightly off center uh, because the middle block of the canopy is directly over the um, uh, is directly over the hungry villager, and the hungry villager is slightly off center. Uh, and now, if you're uh, really familiar with lightning mechanics, uh, you know that the canopy actually only needs to be a six by six square. Uh, I've made it a seven by seven square so that you don't have to worry about the orientation of the farm. Uh, the canopy is a bit ugly, though, um, so um, I, I'm going to uh, pretty, it up, uh, pretty it up a bit by um, filling in the area a little. Um, this is purely cosmetic, so if you want to save some blocks and some time, you could just skip it. Um, and, and likewise, you could actually skip adding the foundation, uh, which is just a layer of full blocks uh, with a layer of top half slabs under that. Uh, also purely cosmetic, allowing the bottom edge of the build to stylistically match the top edge. Um, um, uh, just make sure that uh, the drop chute here uh, remains open. It's got to be all the way down. Uh, all right, um, uh, now you can uh, hook up any kind of item storage or item transportation that you want to the drop chute. Uh, and... Um, and I guess uh, that's it. <laughs> um, here again is the completed build. Uh, this is uh, identical to the one that uh, was demoed at the beginning, sans the glowing effect uh, for the villagers. Uh, and that is all for this video. <laughs> I know it's been long, so if you're, uh, if you're still watching, thanks for sticking it out. Uh, and a big thanks to Unary Bit for the initial design of this build, uh, one that I found so useful in so many worlds. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments. And thanks for watching.